Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Michelle Lemons. I am a Prevention and Health Coordinator here at PCAF, Pierce County AIDS Foundation. My position specifically focuses on providing resources and support for Black women in Pierce County, as well as, well as Thurston, Mason, and Lewis County. I also connect with lots of Black-led or Black-serving organizations uh, in the South Sound. I would also like to introduce our ASL interpreter who has joined us for each of our events this week, Nivia Crest. Nivia has been working with FECAF for over 10 years. She has 20 years of experience as an American Sign Language interpreter and is certified through the Registry of Interpreters for the Deaf. She is also the director of Deaf Ministries in a local church for over 17 years, reaching a marginalized group to facilitate communication for clear understanding. Thank you so much for helping us out today, Nivia. We are so thankful for you. Okay, before we jump into today's events, I would like to show a short video of our month-long digital marketing campaign highlighting Black-owned restaurants in our region. Um, if you joined us yesterday, you may have seen the video already, but we are going to check it out again. So here we go. Dining Out for Life South Sound invites you to feast, celebrating Black-owned restaurants in the South Sound. Join us throughout the month of February to explore the flavors of a diaspora that stretches from Africa to the Caribbean and the American South. For a list of participating businesses, go to diningoutforlife.com forward slash South Sound. Fantastic. This is a list of uh, for uh, that is free for folks to view and join. We would love to grow our list as with as many black owned restaurants as possible. So we will continue accepting businesses throughout the month of February. If you're interested in participating, please reach out to me at mlemons at pcaf waorg And we will also be posting that in our chat box. Um, again, that's free to join. This is just a, a great resource to have if you're interested in going to a Black-owned business. And you should be, because it's great. So let's get into today's events. Today, our, today is our virtual art gallery, and it was created to spotlight one of our talented PCAF clients and other Black women artists and the joy their art brings to the community. Stigma around HIV often deters individuals from seeking testing and other resources. Each year, we recognize National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day with various events to acknowledge the lives that have been lost, as well as the ed to educate the community about HIV. The first National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day was in 1999 and began as a grassroots or education effort to raise awareness about HIV and AIDS prevention, care, and treatment in communities of color. PCAF strives to continue that work by reducing stigma and the spread of HIV in the South Sound. This, I, I'm mostly, I'm so excited about the events today because, um, you know, I had the pleasure of interviewing one of our clients who goes by the name of Greta Williams. I was able to meet with her and her two daughters to interview her about being a textile artist and how her work has impacted her life. And before I play the video, I should give a disclaimer. Um, <laughs> meeting Greta was so fun. Um, her daughters were extremely hilarious. So in the video, I am definitely laughing quite a bit. Um, we all are. So um, I just want to make sure that um, I say that so that you are aware that the laughing is me. And as I just really hope that um, the joy and the fun that we had in the interview is conveyed um, to all of our viewers. So here we go. Hello, um, this is our spotlight client. We are highlighting you today. Can you just do an introduction of yourself and your pronouns? And we will move on to your wonderful daughters today. <laughs> okay, I'm um, I'm I'm um, Shasta Williams, and um, um, I'm known as um, as Greta Williams. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, asked to do the showcase. This is my first time 
So it might be a little nerves there, but other than that, <laughs> um, I'm glad that um, my mother, uh, grandmother that raised me from a little child, she taught me how to sew and she would use newspapers and we would take cut patterns out of newspaper and then cut it onto the material. So I've been uh, been sewing since I was a little girl. Um, she had one of the old fashioned sewing machines with the paddle, you go back and forward Ooh. and everything. And so um, um, so I learned how to, uh, to, to sew and was also in um, sewing uh, classes in school. As I came up, we used to call it home ec economic school classes mm -hmm. and baking. So I'm also a baker. Um, so it's a blessing to be able to be able to share with someone else who maybe don't feel like my problem was I didn't feel I had most confidence in myself and fear that I could do it. You know, uh, uh, oh, I get a little shaky. Well, they asked me to do it. I'm like, oh, no, baby, I don't make nothing that. No, I won't make it. <laughs> because I've dealt with the public and they're, they're, sometimes the public can be very harsh. You, you know, either they don't uh, wait till you done made it and they don't like it or either, you know, I want my money back. Or, this is not what I said. So, um, in that area, that kind of make you, you know, just say, well, I just open myself then to, to, you know, having to deal with the public. But I have to, there was issues that I had to learn to overcome and, um, and have confidence knowing that, um, expressing myself, what I can do and what I can't do. So that way the person who I'm sewing for will have an understanding that, well, um, this is not what I want because they want something further. So if anything over my, over my, uh, over my knowledge of how to do it, then I wouldn't tell the person, yes, I can, if I don't have the knowledge knowing that I can, I can't. So I don't give a yes answer and then take it, then can't do it, and then, you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just love to, um, I, that's my joy, sewing and bowling, fishing, you name it. I love to do all that kind of stuff with me and my, <laughs> me and my daughter here. Um, uh, so, yeah, so I love to, I'm on the bowling league. Ooh. So I bowl on the league uh, every, every, third, every Monday on the league. But it's just an enjoyment, and um, I, f I find that being my age, it's it's a joy of uh, fulfilling of doing things uh, that keep you motivated. You know, because of, a, 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 as you get older, you got to find something to motivate you. If you don't, then you just you know you just a cotch potato, <laughs> and that's what you become. So it's a uh, um, it's an enjoyment and everything. And I like to like I say, this is my daughter Zakia Smith. Here to my right and to my further right is my spiritual daughter. Um, this is Janetta. Janetta is my uh, spirit. So uh, I give back for someone else to say something. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Can you both in? All the questions. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> my name is, um, Zakia, I'm Greta's daughter. I have no interest in sewing, <laughs> but I am the mechanic, the computer computer genius. The we all need one of those in the family. <laughs> <laughs> the brother, the home fixer. So anything that's broken, I right, fix. Anything that's um, mechanically challenging, my mother calls me like measurements. I was like, I don't like to sew. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you calling me over here to do the measurements? But yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Anything that comes with instructions or, or some type of formality or reading diagrams, that's where I come in at. Yeah. So eventually we, we get it done between the both of us. Like she likes to break the sewing machine. She calls me at <laughs> night. Like, babe, wake up. I need help. What's going on, mom? What's going on? Oh, foot. <laughs> <laughs> this thing don't even work. I'm like, dang it, mom. It just won't work. I'm coming. I'm coming. Save the pouty. <laughs> My mom says that's what children are for. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got that art down. That's why I don't have any. I didn't want to torture them that bad. Um, so, <laughs> so um, um, my full time, I'm a software engineer slash um, reservist major in the Army Reserves, getting ready to retire. Wonderful. Uh, one sibling who's never here. <laughs> it's his turn to babysit. Um, <laughs> his name is John Henry Smith. And maybe you'll run across this video. <laughs> Your mother needs you. <laughs> well, um, that's it. Thank that's you. All, that's all I have. Mm. 
And Jeanette, would you mind introducing yourself? Yes, my name is Jeanette of Charity Cole, and I met Mother Williams at the Church of the Living God in Tacoma, Temple 202. And um, I was going through a really difficult time in my life, and she kind of took me under her wing and inviting, invited me to her sewing class. And um, and I I just had so much fun as a beginner. I think I think the beginning stages are way more fun than what she does. She does the more intricate work. <laughs> and um, I've been at church when she wore her outfits, and everyone stops us and says, "Where did you get that?" Ooh. And she modestly replies, "Oh, I made this." And so. Um, her outfit, her outfits look really beautiful on. She knows how to put jewelry together and, and outfits. And so um, as long as you're flexible, if you order something and you're flexible, then, you know, I don't think anything ever comes out exactly the way that you imagine it because it's gonna come from her imagination. But I think that if you work with her and let her help you, uh, help you, you know, in trying it on things like that, if you if you ever did feel like you had a an issue or if it didn't look the same on the the hanger which you know we all know that clothes don't look the same on the hanger mm -hmm. especially now with covid you can't try everything on and mm -hmm. the return the return lines are longer than i've ever seen them yes because that goes <laughs> for everybody so now um you know if you're if you're flexible and you know how to uh, take a little instruction she can make you look really beautiful. Ooh, so, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for you, um, for you all spending your time with us today. Um, we are so excited to really spotlight uh, Ms. Greta Williams and her wonderful works. Um, what I would like to show our audience here is all of the beautiful pieces that are around the room, just covered in beautiful colors and just all of that. I'm so excited about it. Christmas shirt. Ooh. <laughs> With the bear? Yes. Uh -huh. I yeah. love that. And, and I'm picking up a look behind it, behind the back of the shirt. Behind the back. Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're looking behind. So that was a Christmas Ooh. Shirt. <laughs> That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do that yourself, yeah. the, outline the outline and the color? Mm -hmm. Wow, and how long would a piece like this take? Well, it would it would take a while because having to get having to get all the uh, all the things that I can order and get the things that I need. So that's the process and find places that you can. Because I um uh, had um to you know to like I don't know whether Joanne's, but I never looked into doing that since I've been up here. So um, but I um. Um, know that is you know that's what you have to go to the place that you can find um, the, uh, the little patterns that you can uh, put on. So you have to make sure you try to find them mm -hmm. and to put on to the shirt. But it's fun. Uh, I've I've been here since nineteen. I mean I'm sorry since two thousand five. Okay. Uh, that I've been been here and everything. So ever since then I've been my, you know been sewing my pocketbook here that I um that I uh, made everything that you see is what I made. Uh, even that um, coat that's on the counter, I mean, the coat hanging up right there. And it's beautiful. It looks so thick and comfortable. Wonderful. Oh, go get it for me in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the story that's behind that coat uh, on the door is, it was made from a uh, uh, from a, um, a slave woman mm -hmm. who really? designed her first coat. Wow. And next sewing classes, they had some kind of way they got hope to it and was able to, um, and they was able to um, to put it together. So this here is the uh, go around. It's a, it, uh, and you take the um, where the scarf at. I am a here fan of colors. This is a scarf that throws around the neck. Ooh. If you went in, and then here is here is the um, there is a button. Here is the button here that goes under here, over here in fasten. So in other words, it was kind of looked like, kind of looked like this, and the button fastens over here. Ooh, I like it. 
And this is how it looked in the back. It's cute on that ass. Mm -hmm. I'm a polka dot woman. <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss Greta, is are these are your pieces? Um, I know Jeanette said that okay. it sounds like you commissioned pieces. Do you? Um, how much do you usually sell them for? Or what does that look like? I never sold for the public. Oh really? It was one time I had a bad experience. I guess that's why I didn't do it anymore. Um, um and so. Uh, so these pieces, um, you said that you don't um, make for the public, but right. um, do you share with your congregation at church? Or? Oh yeah, they know that when I walks in, they can definitely say she didn't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So they tickles me. They'll tell me quick, you know. Well, she didn't make that. <laughs> she, that's what her wife you say. They say you can definitely tell whether it's made or not, whether it's bought. Okay. So, um, but they'd be, you know, unusual about it. Like, wow, can you? Oh, goodness. But because um, sewing has to be a, a, anything that you do has to be a joy in doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be a joy in doing sewing when you make it because uh, um, there are times that we in sometimes um, public uh, sewing would also would take away the joy of doing now is that now you being mandated that you got to get it done but you're not putting your joy into mm -hmm. but your joy have to be into whatever you're doing whether backing whether whatever it is your heart got to be into it and then you have to find yourself making sure that um my love is also in it not you know like grudging or Design. <laughs> Sorry, she's scrapping work, people. She's scrapping work. <laughs> All right. So, and that piece that's behind you on the door knob, hanging on the door knob, you pick it up and turn it around, look at it. This here. This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is a ironing bowl. What? An ironing bowl. So if you're traveling, you, um, you're traveling, it also sits the iron in it. The, yeah. iron, the hot iron. You can put the hot iron. Yeah, you can also you can do uh, it. Don't burn it. So you put the iron, the iron in it, and then you take it, and then you got the uh, buttons here. The way oh you my put goodness! It, put the work in like that, and put the um, and put the iron in it. Put the iron in it and carry it. So oh my you goodness! So you got the iron, iron, iron and gold. Now that's <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like you know you driving like. Ooh. Well, the iron, so you already got your own little iron right there. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. Thank I mean, you. you could even use that for a flat iron. Yeah. You know, if you're mm -hmm. traveling with your yeah. with your straightener. No, oh, I don't yeah. personally <laughs> use a straightener. Yeah, you know, but... yeah. It, it holds. You know, it won't don't burn anything. It holds the heat and everything. So, yeah. So, what inspires you to make your your different pieces? Because I'm, uh, uh, I love to be different from others. Cause you know, you know, you're going to um, something that um, that makes me. It's um, clothes that you buy don't fit you like if you made it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So when sewing for yourself, I also made I also made my uh, uh, my um, body. Um, um, what do you call it? Um, body yeah, custom fit. Uh, custom on custom fit. Um, my own custom fit um, for your body. So when I, so whatever I make, I just put it on there and it fit. That's my, that's, that's. Oh, you got to be a manicure. You have manic, my manicure. Your manicure. So, oh. The manicure. The manicure over here. show a little bow headed, low headed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my body. And if I put anything on, it's going to fit just Ooh. Right. Homemade. That's homemade. <laughs> that's all right. Look, right. we do what we got to do to make sure it right. fits. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that's um, so that that's uh, that so whatever I make, I just put it onto the body, and it, it, it and it's gonna fit that because that's my body itself that it was made from. Okay. Yeah, and the jacket next to you. Yeah. Right there. This is one I made. Ooh. Let's see where's the initials? I put my initials on them. I like that. Now, did you sew your initials into this? I have my embroidery, my embroidery machine behind you. Right here, it does the um, the embroidery work on there. Thing is that you can make whatever outfit that you want to make. 
And then you don't have to worry about nobody else wearing the same thing you got. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you go to the store, buy something at the store. You got about, you know, about five or six other dresses matching that dress. And you might pass by somebody and then you and they all are matching. Mm-hmm. So I always been like, I ain't wanting, I, so that pushed me further into making sure I had my clothes ready mm-hmm. and everything in design. I would have something different from somebody else. And how long does this take? How long does it take to make a piece? Well, um, well, if something's simple, then you could do it within maybe two weeks. Two weeks? Wow. Yeah. But then if you got something that's very detailed, then you're looking at a good, um, for me now, sewing. I'm not that, um, I'm not that fast, fast. But, um, uh, so, you, um, I don't like to put my time, put myself on the time period. Because a person expects me to do it at a time, I have to draw, I have to sew at my own pace. Mm-hmm. Um, and everything because reading patterns is, is, is not that easy. <laughs> right. I can imagine. Having to read patterns because the, the Vogue and um, McCoy and all them, each one, some pattern for simplicity. So each one of them, um, some uh, patterns are made different and um, they, they're not uh, made that well sometimes to understand what it is. So, but other than that, um, like this here, like this here, this outfit here. Here, I, uh, it took me took me two months to get that did. Ooh, but it's so detailed. Yeah, that beautiful. It yeah. is so beautifully detailed. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And the, yeah. and the jewelry piece yeah. on the top, I see. Mm-hmm. And the buttons. <laughs> oh yes, the buttons are beautiful. Yes. And this right here, white. I uh, this one's cute too. Oh. This one comes with a head wrap. Ooh, you got me with the head wrap. Here's the head wrap. It's very cute. Ooh. And it's a zipper. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got excited. It's a zipper. And here. With the skirt. The skirt. That trails in the back. It has a shorter front and kind of flows in the back. Ooh. Very cute. All you do is throw a black shirt underneath, ladies, and there you go. Okay. And you see her jewelry. Is Did you make that so jewelry, Miss Greta? I don't make the jewelry. She just knows how to put I it together. How to, how to get it. Okay, that's still a talent. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you need that's a picture ready by itself. Yes, ma'am. And I also love the style and hats. So I have the Greek hats, some, some, are, some are ebony hats. This is the um, serger. This right here is the one that clean up the whole garment. Around the, uh, um, it cleans the, um, the garment up and everything. I don't even need to get this in. This right here is what I made, like a Hawaiian. Ooh, very detailed. It, uh, yeah, and what like I said, but this right here is um, is my serger sewing machine. It cleans up the edges within. Um, you don't have to worry about cutting it. Makes all it, the hems professionally. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see, do I have one over here? One over here. See, like this here. See, like this edge here? Yeah. It it, 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 it it seals it. So now you're ready to wear the garment. And nobody wouldn't think that, you know, it was a hem. Because this right here, I took this right here, done um, the surgery, done made it the way in. You can sew it. And not knowing that is that's a him. You know, it's not some material you got to sit there for the longest, and you know him, but they're also hymns. This baby hemmed with me a long time. Uh, this um, machine right here, and this the new baby I bought, right there. That, that does uh, all kind of decorative. Uh, I see your push pin pillow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, push pin pillow. <laughs> yeah, they you know, made this right here at the school. Sewing school. Oh you know, boy! You know, right in, put your put your trash in. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. What's the magnet for on there? The magnet here is also for um, like if you go to um, it's nothing uh real unless you got something that's it'll it'll stick to it and hold it for you. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. And you said sewing school. How did you go to sewing school? Oh, I've been with the um, with the um, the place we go to, Boys and Gloves Club. Boys and Gloves Club out on um, uh, 65th, uh, 56th Street. Yeah. 65th and uh, what are this? This one they just did. 
supposed to probably have a new, the new one that they built. Oh, awesome. And do they have classes there? Or? Oh, yeah. They have classes there. They do, you do free sewing. Wow. First come, first serve. I had no idea. So I always be trying to f save her seat for her. <laughs> I get upset with her. Then I'm just, I'm a, then I'm upset with her. Because they've been talking about, you can't hold no seat. You can't save no seat. First come, first serve. And I get outside. I told me you going to come. How long are you going to be before you get him? You ain't calling me on the way. Say no seats. Come on, come on, girl. Like, it's okay. And I've been took something, took stuff, and sit in the uh, in the seat. Like, mm -hmm. like, oh, oh, she I, went to the bathroom. Yeah. So I had the seat taken up and put her put my stuff next to, next to uh, where she gonna sit. So I got the chair all taken up and everything. And then I see is Melody coming. So I think they, they got so used to me doing it. They know that. Let me just leave girl alone. <laughs> Um, where I could take many of them. That one over there with the uh, with the, right there with the uh, African style. That of African right there. It was um, um, learning that um, not to freeze up, and you know, because when I get stuck, then I get freeze up. Then I would find myself like, um, I can't do this here. Um, you know, you know, and I you you know how you just down yourself. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't, you, so not motivating yourself that I can. Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, I know I can make this out there. So having that, uh, when you run into a, um, a pattern that uh, you don't know how, that um, what that pattern is reading, mm -hmm. then you put it away and just hoping that um, you f that someone you you know that does sewing um, that will be able to help you, um, help you to get further in. The, the, the sewing that you were doing, where you were stuck on, you'd be able to tell them, be able to help you say, oh, this is how it goes, it goes like this. And every time I had my daughter, and uh, my daughter, uh, I'll get hold of her, she said, mama. I said, oh, come on here. I said, somebody got to take on the leg. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, boy, you in the sewing machines. Uh, so she said, if I don't get with this sewing machine, you baking. So, but um, but when I can get two heads, is better than one. Mm -hmm. Because the person, other, another person can see what, you, what they see, but you don't see it, what they're looking at. And then when you have, the name one is having patience to mm -hmm. listen to what the person is trying to show you. And then, you know, it come, and then it comes together and be like, oh, like that. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, there was times, you know, my daughter had hoped me out. I was <laughs> looking up, and boy, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a tumultuous time. Right? <laughs> oh, Lord. I wasn't going through a crisis. It was uh, pre-COVID. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm like, Mom, that is a size 26. <laughs> and I think she's looking for a 28. <laughs> that is not, I'm not just like mom. <laughs> that is a size 26. That is not. That is not. I'm just like, okay, try it on. Her favorite word foot. <laughs> too small. The thing is too small. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That that shirt right there is mm -hmm. my nightmare. <laughs> and this right here used to be one of my uh, things I hate hated to do. Zippers, I'm good with. But this is buttoned up all the way down the back. Yeah. So when I would do buttons, I would be like, oh, Lord, because you got to fit them <laughs> just right. Buttonholes was hard to do. I didn't so, know that. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, because you got to make sure that you have them spaced the way that you space and make sure that, you know, when you put the book put this on you got to make sure that everything is uh okay. placed where it needs to place that so it, uh it'll be able to fit onto the button because mm -hmm. you can't have it wrong you have the button jacked up on the jacked up in the wrong place right? <laughs> and you're wrong. just trying to put it on and here you're jacked, you all jacked up <laughs> <laughs> this one here oh i love that one mm -hmm. oh, this is woo so you went at the church and you're like what Ooh. yes that's beautiful. It looks so this, beautiful on. I love the colors. This is what yes. you should have interviewed in. This is what she should have. Right. I love that piece. Let's see, this right here. And the detail on the sides. Yeah. And the hanger doesn't do it justice. You have to, that's what I was telling her. Yeah. She should have worn them because they're beautiful on. 
Ooh, and the headpiece. Mm -hmm. Now you calling my name with the good headpiece. <laughs> Ooh, yes. you can style it any way that you want to style it. Tight, so beautiful. Any way that you want to uh, to bend the hat, however you want to do it. I love that. You can you can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you just want it all the way up. So it'd be like the African look. That's me. And then <laughs> that my daughter was still uh, saying, and this right here would be the piece. And looking to be, uh, My spiritual daughter, she was, um, 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 when the Lord blessed me to meet her at church and everything, and, and she was like, somebody had on, and she said, oh, what you got? that's pretty, what you, I said, I bought you bought it? I said, yeah, I, I sew, so, I said, don't you want to get, you ever sew? She said, oh, mama. Yeah, yeah, I said, well, come on here, you, you, you gonna get, I'm gonna get you in the sewing, so, yeah, <laughs> right. ever since I, <laughs> She said, yes, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so how long has that been since that began? Over a year. Over a year. About two years. Yeah, about two years. Yeah. And, and my mom, made, she made all of her clothes throughout high school and her, her gowns and everything. And so I've always been interested, but never had the time. Mm -hmm. So I was actually like, oh, this sounds like a good segue because I was going through something difficult and it was so fun. I'm I'm I've been having a lot of fun. I've even made my son a teddy bear. Oh how cool. Yeah. My daughter a coat. Yeah, and my daughter a coat. And and my daughter has the, the small version of this coat oh, with the little zipper and it's purple with pretty colorful flowers on it and um drawstring through the hoodie. So yeah. That's awesome. And how does it feel to be able to see her wearing your pieces that you created? It feels wonderful. And actually, it feels even better that she put it on and liked it because she's extremely picky. <laughs> and since she was little, if we went to the store, she'd say, Mom, you have to, since she was three, you have to buy these shoes. That's, yeah, that's, that's the daughter. fashionista. That's my fashionista. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even like that when I was little, so I don't know where that mess came from, but she's like, Ms. Greta. you have to buy these shoes, you have to buy this purse, she's oh, like that, and so um, she loves to wear it, and then I feel so wonderful when she says, my mommy made this, mm. so yeah. That is wonderful. And so we also, um, um, with our sister's COVID and stuff is going on, um, and the, the Lord had put on my heart, you know, get with her and see that. I said, well, about to do Saturdays. Do Saturday sewing together. So now we have, the, the, not this Saturday here, but next Saturday, the Lord will, we'll start our first uh, uh, sewing, sewing together. Yes. And, oh, making different, and making different and uh, different things and taking our time and uh, uh, and get stuff out to the, uh, to the public. Right. So the public can see. Uh, so there's also some other odds and ends stuff that I made also. That's that is uh, is real nice and it's a joy. You know, it's mind soothing. Yes. Same way like I would want to fish creek fishing. Oh. Yeah, fish ain't biting. <laughs> right. You just feel feel good just to sit there and reminisce. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, with peace and quiet. Awesome. Thank you so much for everyone viewing our video of our spotlight client, Ms. Greta Williams. It was such a fun interview, if you couldn't tell. I was over here laughing with myself. <laughs> and it was such a great time. 
So for the last 30 minutes um, of today, we really want to um, show off our virtual art gallery, um, which we have titled Living Truths, um, which highlights Black women and HIV. And let me just get this going for you all. Wonderful. So this art gallery, um, it is comprised um, of multiple different Black women artists. Um, it will um, be available to watch on our Facebook. Of course, this video will stay available for you all. It will also be posted on our on our um, our website. So for a deeper dive um, into the art gallery, which it is 98 slides in total, and it just dives deep into the beautiful art pieces that were submitted by each artist. If you are interested, please go to pcaf-wad.org forward slash living truths. It is there and available for you all now. But um, for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to go through it and kind of talk about each artist who was able to submit pieces um, and who they are and um, what inspired them uh, to create their pieces. So here we go. Um, our first artist uh, displayed submitted 20 pieces. Um, Dion Vonner was recently featured in Tacoma Public Library's Hilltop Stories visual and audio reflections event. Um, she is an expressive visualizer creating from concepts successful outcomes using artist, artistic intuition. She explores the vari a variety of topics from her everyday life experiences, discovering new and interesting details to inspire her work. The exploration process gives her the touch and style she needs to bring the unique character of her subject to life, connecting to the viewer. Her body of work is eclectic and her style of painting can employ bright, bold colors or subtle midtones, always accentuated by expressive brushstrokes. Oil paint is her medium of choice and painting is an adventure explored through color, light, texture, and movement. Whether she is painting a portrait, um, an abstract, a mural, or still life, capturing the essence of the subject is most important, um, is the most important thing to her. She uses a time-honored technique of underpainting, building up color and light with multiple layers, revealing luminosity and depth. I have lived in the Hilltop area for four years now, and I have seen Dion around the community at various different meetings and events. Um, if you are not familiar with her work um, and you are in the Tacoma area, I would quite frankly be surprised <laughs> because she is just everywhere in the best way. Um, she has so many hands assisting um, Hilltop and bringing beautiful art to Hilltop residents as well as the greater Tacoma area. And I'm excited to see the history in her pieces that she also brings to the table. Um, this is uh, another one of her pieces. She, she submitted 20 pieces um, to the art gallery and they are beautifully dis um, photographed and they all offer a wonderful description. Oh. And our next artist is Jackie Scott. Jackie submitted eight pieces of her works um, which is really exciting. Um, she is a creative doll artist. Oh, sorry. Jackie is a creative doll artist who oh, uh, is also a designer who attended Seattle Central Community College, where she received her advertising arts degree. She created a, um, her own line of African-American dolls that are perfectly named Jamila, meaning beautiful in the Swahili African language. And that's a picture of them there. Her handmade dolls are made from cotton material and African fabrics with Caribbean colors, embellished with beads, shells, and other creative finds.
Jackie has designed and sold her Jamila dolls across Washington and California for over 20 years. Please visit her Shopify store, Jamila Dolls by Jackie Scott, that will be launching in seven days. There, will, there you'll be able to find beautiful creative designs of her artwork. She also submitted drawings, as you could tell, um, using pencil, and they are incredibly detailed. I had the pleasure of speaking with Jackie over the phone and hearing how she plans to expand her artwork, and it was truly inspirational. I welcome all of you to check out her site next week when it launches. Our next artist is Aisha Harrison, and she submitted nine pieces. Aisha Harrison has roots in Olympia, Washington, going back four generations. She studied abroad in Spain during high school, pr prompting her to be a Spanish major as an undergraduate. She loved studying Latin American literature because of the ways in which the indigenous people use Spanish stories and images, subverting them and intertwining them with their own to ensure that indigenous peoples images and stories survived. The camouflage aspects of, oops, sorry. The camouflage aspects of resistance reminded her of ways that she navigated being of African-American and European-American mixed heritage and predominantly Euro European-American spaces. Her work today as both an artist and arts educator attempts to navigate the spaces between between to create personal symbolic imagery and to encourage others to submit or subvert dominant narratives by telling the stories and in hidden or or overt ways. I apologize. My mouth is just quitting today. I would like to uh, congratulate Aisha as well as one of her pieces are being displayed in downtown Olympia this summer, 2021. Um, this life-size sculpture that you see on the screen now is currently being turned into bronze in preparation for the display. And if you would like to learn more about Aisha, please visit her website at Aisha Harrison for more information. You can also donate to have another one of her pieces bronze so that it can also be placed outside. Our next artist is Cassandra Walker. So Cassandra submitted two powerful pieces to the art gallery that I hope you all are able to enjoy. Self-healing is the essence of Cassandra's art. She believes that at the core of her being lies the truth of who she is and who she was always meant to be. Currently on a spiritual journey, digging deeper into her center, blurring all of the edges of being and finding comfort and seeing the imperfect. Painting for her is about facing her fears and combating self-doubt. As a Black Filipina woman, she notes that this growth is essential for her to survive in a world that still has a hard time seeing her. Her art explores the nuances of being Black and yet not Black enough, blurring the lines of societal perceptions and expressing the burdens placed upon her Black body. Through Cassandra's art, she hopes to create a space from which broken Black and Brown women can heal and become empowered. Being from the greater Puget Sound area, transplanted as a military family, but has carved out many memories in the Pacific Northwest Coast for the last 20 years. She calls Tacoma home. When I initially saw her pieces and read the descriptions, I was incredibly moved. She has a way of conveying that journey that I just spoke about in her art that is almost palatable. I wish we had the opportunity to show these pieces in person um, because I think it would be even more powerful. And you can check out her Instagram page for more of her artwork at The Art of Senses. Our next artist is Robin Annette Jordan. Robin has been an advocate with PCAP for quite a while and has shared her artwork with us in the past. And we are so thankful um, to, to have her participate in this virtual art gallery. Um, 
when we had in-person events for the last two years, we actually used her art as, as um, our advertising art um, for National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. We also have one of her paintings in our Hillary Klein room that is absolutely fantastic. Um, I almost want to take it home, but <laughs> if it comes up missing, don't blame me, okay? <laughs> so Robin is a local and established artist and she is a strong collaborator with PCAP, as I just mentioned, and has previously offered her uh, her artwork to highlight events, support groups, and fundraisers. As a self-taught artist who designs in color, who delights in color, she relies upon her creativity and artistic skills to engage individuals, reduce stigma, and build community. Robin's art organically embodies identity, presence, and ownership of eloquence and strength. Robin's work challenges us to move towards improving the well being of women through policy, education, and innovative programs. Robin's artwork includes themes of Black women and girls clothed deeply, deeply in hues and attire that's captured and in the vivid and radiant movement, and also faceless. Her acrylic paintings fa fairly sing with celebration and honor the people and places she has experienced. The facelessness of her figures adds a narrative of inclusion, inviting us to lean in and witness ourselves within her paintings. And I, just as I explained, um, seeing her painting in the Hillary Klein room is so, it's so bright and so vivid. And I do think that, um, you know, those, those faceless drawings allow you to put yourself in there, especially as a young Black woman. And it's beautiful to see. And you can check out more of her, her art at her website, which is rjannette.com for more of her work. Our last artist that we, um, that we featured, but certainly not not the least um, for contr contributions is Monvelia Blair. She uh, used to work for, with PCAF in the past um, and providing mental health and medical support to our clients. And I was excited to be able to have the opportunity to chat with her and um, just get to know another Black woman that worked for PCAF <laughs> and just hear her journey and, um, and how she's grown. She is currently living in Hawaii and she retired a few years ago. So I hope she's enjoying her retirement. Um, she also has an Etsy shop. So where you can um, uh, look at her jewelry, um, which is her art pieces. And uh, you can also order some. So this, um, her jewelry, it, it has um, an overall theme and, and title, which is fold, folding, and folded equals beauty. And all of these pieces displayed in our show are uh, made of copper crystals and buttons. And she, she gave a beautiful, um, almost poem uh, statement that I'd like to read now. We all start out like bright, shiny copper pennies. No matter how hard the blow of the hammer on the copper metal or how often the blow of the hammer strikes the copper, despite the exposure to repeated heating and forming of the copper, no matter how tarnished the process of life, we are all bright and shiny copper pennies. We have been created to allow our brightness to be seen. What I believe is that we are beautiful. And I, I just wanted to make sure that we shared that today because um, her pieces are really, really beautiful. Um, and I just hearing the, the story behind them makes you wanna wear them more. So she submitted um, 13 photos of her pieces for our gallery today. And with that, um, we are at the end of our, our event. It's um, kind of sad because it went so quickly, but I do wanna thank you all for joining us today. We do have two more events um, for National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Tonight, we will be dropping a uh, Tacoma Kiki Ballroom presentation video, celebrating black folks in the local ballroom scene and the history of ballroom culture and HIV. And Sunday, um, at 12 p.m. is our merging of the masses events. 
We welcome Pastor Jones from New Salem Baptist Church, Dr. Prentice Johnson from Greater Christ Temple Church, and Pastor Reginald Richardson Jr. from Your Bible Speaks Community Seventh-day Adventist Church to share their wisdom and insights into how HIV shows up in the Black community and how the church can support HIV prevention. We will also have a 30-minute question and answer session following the conversation. And I know tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday. I hear you. I, I, I mean, my team didn't make it, but I do understand. Um, but in preparation for that, the event does end two hours before kickoff. So <laughs> there is time to attend the event as well as uh, make your food and your plates and sit down before kickoff. <laughs> Again, I just want to thank you all for participating in our event today. Thank you so much, Nivia, for providing ASL interpretation. Um, we look forward to seeing you at our future events. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. I also, um, just a quick plug for us, PCAP offers HIV testing. Um, we have free at-home test kits. Due to the pandemic, we are not offering in-person testing at this moment, but we are working on it. Um, so please um, check out the chat box and there should be a link in there if you're interested in ordering any um, safer sex materials or free at-home test kits, please email us um, or follow that link to um, fill out our order form. Again, thank you all so much and have a wonderful day.